A few weeks ago, Netflix released an initial sneak peek at their upcoming adaptation of the Three Body Problem book series. And around the same time, my previous video on the Three Body Problem, which was about the Tencent adaptation that came out earlier this year, sort of exploded. And while I don't know if there is a direct causal relationship between those two events, it seemed appropriate for me to give some of my thoughts on this new adaptation, because even though it is a pretty short trailer, I think there are some interesting things to talk about. And it also seemed like a good way to follow up on that previous video, because I made it thinking that not very many people would be interested in watching that show, but I was actually pretty pleasantly surprised. And so I wanted to say, yeah, thank you to everybody who checked out that review. I'm glad to see there's some love for Three Body Problem content on YouTube still. In this video, I am going to be talking about some of the events in the first book in the series, as well as mentioning some characters from later books, but I'm going to be trying to avoid specific spoilers for the later books, um, but you have been warned either way. The first thing I wanted to get out of the way is that ever since mentioning in that first video that I had my doubts that the Netflix adaptation would be good because the showrunners are the same people who made the last few seasons of Game of Thrones, which everybody sort of collectively agrees were terrible. By far the most frequent comment I have been getting is something along the lines of, well, these showrunners were also responsible for the early seasons of Game of Thrones before they ran out of source material, and those seasons were fantastic, and so I think there's a good chance that they could do a fantastic adaptation of this book series since they have a complete series to work with. And I think you're absolutely right that I was being a little bit harsh or unfair in that video and that not knowing much about their approach to this new series means that I can't really make any solid judgments about whether it's going to be good or not. However, one thing that seems worth noting with regards to the claim that they have the complete book series to work with is that from what we've seen so far, this adaptation is not sticking very close to the books at all. There are some things that are recognizable as plot elements from the book, but most of the characters, like the majority of the characters, are not from the books. And in most cases, it's hard to tell if they're even inspired by characters from the books. Adding on top of that, that we have some characters from later books in the series who are being thrown into this first season, and it seems like we're not really getting an adaptation of the first book. It seems more like we're getting an interpretation of it. And that's more where my worry is coming from, because if they're not adapting the book so much as inventing their own loose story that's sort of inspired by it, then that might be where we run into some problems, to say the least. Now, that's not to say that it's going to be a completely different story. In fact, in this recent trailer, there are a lot of shots that are very clearly recognizable as scenes from the book. Most of these relate to Ye and Jia who is one of the most important characters both in the book and seemingly in this new TV show. We get to see some footage of the struggle session, which in the English language version of the book is the opening scene of the book, but which interestingly didn't make it into the Tencent adaptation, largely because of censorship issues from what I understand. I'm not really the right person to assess the historical accuracy of this scene, but it does look a lot like how I imagined it in the books, and I am glad that we're going to be getting this scene in the new show because it was definitely something that was lacking from the Tencent series, since it does have a major effect on Ye Wen Jia and her motivations going forward. A lot of the other Ye Wen Jia scenes in this trailer have to do with her at Red Coast Base, and it's really striking how similar a lot of these shots are to the original Tencent adaptation, to the extent that there are some shots that are almost like the exact same in terms of composition. I think that's such a testament to the power of the imagery in the original book that two completely separate teams working on other ends of the globe gave completely separate interpretations of these same scenes and ended up with something that looks visually so similar. So yeah, I don't have any complaints about those scenes, although there wouldn't be much to complain about anyway since there's only like a few shots. Some of the other shots in this trailer are definitely harder to recognize. We get some shots in something that looks like a neutrino detector, which I'm not really sure what's going on there, but it looks visually pretty cool. I don't know if I've seen a neutrino detector in a sci-fi series before, and it certainly goes with the themes of the book about uh, the progress of science failing. So that, that well, I mean, that could be, that could be something. There's this shot of what looks to me like it could be a trisolaran body rehydrating, but it's only a hand, so I'm not really sure about that. There's some shots of what looked like a giant machine in space that I'm really not sure how to interpret. And then we get the scene where Dasha, who in this version is played by Benedict Wong, which for the record, I think is fantastic casting, 
even though I quite liked Tencent's version of Dasha, who was very different, uh, Benedict Wong does look more like how I imagined Dasha in the books. So it's going to be nice to see his adaptation of this character. But anyway, we get the scene where he is going into somebody's house and seeing the countdown written on the wall. Uh, which, if you've read the book or seen the original show, you know what's going on here. What's interesting is that Wang Miao, the character who originally had this countdown in their head and was being driven insane by it, doesn't seem to be a character in this TV show. So I'm not really sure who it is that's seeing this countdown or why they're writing it in blood on the walls. It seems a little bit melodramatic. Um, I, I quite liked how in the book it was more of a subtle thing where Wang Miao starts noticing numbers on photographs and in other places and slowly starts to question his sanity. But, you know, it's just a different interpretation of the same basic idea. Now, to get onto the cast, though, this is what I was talking about when I say that this is going to be like a very, very loose adaptation of the book. Because the only book characters from the first book who seem to be in this show are Ye Wen Jia, Dasha, and Mike Evans. We don't get Wang Miao, we don't get Shen Yufei, we don't get all of these characters who were really important in the original books. Presumably, they have been replaced by all these other characters who we get shots of in the trailer. It seems like they might be splitting Wang Miao into multiple people. We get, for instance, this shot of this woman putting on what looks like a VR headset and presumably going into the three-body game, so maybe she is partly taking over Wang Miao's place, but then we also get shots of other characters in the three-body game as well. So what that means is that a lot is riding on these new characters being good and interesting characters. And I guess we'll have to see. I don't know. I, I can't really say anything about them. They're certainly trying to make a more international cast than in the original book, which does sort of make sense because the later books in the series are a lot more international focused than the first book. And some of the characters, in fact, from later books are being pulled into this first book. For example, Thomas Wade, who is a huge character in the third book. We also have a character named Jin Cheng, who some people are theorizing might be Cheng Shen, another character from the third book who might be pulled over into this first book. That does sort of make sense because she's a really major character later on, and we know that she is around at this point, we just don't get to see her in the first book. So I could see why they would want to bring her in early. I'm not sure why they would have changed her name though, because Cheng Shen's name is kind of important to her entire role in the story. Her forename, Shen, from what I understand, means heart in Mandarin Chinese, although correct me if I'm wrong on that. And without getting into any spoilers about what she does, that name is definitely relevant to who she is as a person and the influence she has on the plot and the in events as they unfold. We also have Sofan, another character from the third book who is being plopped into this first season. I really don't think they should be having Sofan in this season, for reasons that I can't really say without getting into spoilers. But suffice it to say, she's a very mysterious character, and I think introducing her early on sort of dilutes some of the mystery of her. But I guess we'll have to see what they do with her. Going over the IMDB page, there's mostly a bunch of other characters whose names I don't recognize. It's interesting that there is one character whose name is Fu Shi, uh, which I'm assuming is in reference to the mythological figure who was sort of the founder of China. He didn't actually show up in the books from what I recall, but it's very much in line with how the three-body game brings together a bunch of historical figures, or in this case mythological figures, and throws them into this mixed-up environment. So yeah, that would be kind of cool to see. Overall, from this trailer alone, I think the series does have some promise. The original Tencent series had a lot of problems that I didn't get all the way into in that original review. The main one, though, is the pacing, which is very, very slow. And this series could improve upon that a lot, even if I personally didn't mind the slow pacing that much in the original series. However, my worry is that this new series is going to lean a little bit too hard into the action-adventure end of the sci-fi genre, as opposed to the sort of slow, thoughtful, philosophical ends that the book series is very firmly rooted in. There was one interview with the showrunners D&D &D, from a couple years ago that for the life of me I can't find right now, but I seem to recall that in this interview they said that they would be intentionally simplifying elements from the books in order to make the story more palatable for a wider audience. And prior to the Tencent adaptation I would have said that this is sort of inevitable. 
that the books include so many concepts that just would be incredibly hard to convey in a visual format. And so simplifying the plot and some of the more speculative sci-fi elements is the least of what I would expect. However, the Tencent series went so far towards explaining these wacky scientific concepts from the books that I think it would be possible to make a good adaptation of this entire series without simplifying the science at all. And I do think it's going to be a shame if they actually do dilute it a lot, as I recall them saying they would do. Interestingly, I was reading recently that this discussion originally came up with the publication of the books themselves. Liu Chishen, when he was writing the third book, said that he was not going to focus on making the book marketable at all, and that he was just going to write something that was purely for his own entertainment, and introduce so many crazy concepts, and play with timelines so much, that there was no way the general public would be interested in reading it. And then funnily enough, that book turned out to be the most popular book in the series, the book that a lot of people remember the most after finishing it. So I guess what I'm trying to say there is that I think it would be a mistake to underestimate general audiences and their interest and capacity for understanding weird scientific concepts. I just really don't want this new series to be like a generic alien invasion sci-fi space battle type of Netflix show because it could very easily turn into that, and it would really just be taking away everything that makes the books interesting. Ultimately though, I reserve judgment. Trying to determine whether or not this is going to be a good TV show is ultimately an exercise in futility, and it's still a relatively long way off, so plenty of things could change my opinions between now and the time when it actually comes out. So yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Let me know what you thought of this trailer. I thought it was a pretty solid trailer overall, and I really liked the music, but at this point there's very little else I can concretely say about this show. Also, one other thing I wanted to note, just because I thought it was kind of funny, is how in the title card for the show, they included the character Sun, the Chinese character for three, as the letter E in the word problem. Which reminds me a lot of how the letter Sigma is used as the letter E in a lot of Greek-oriented media. It's clearly supposed to be a nod to the original title of the book, Santi, but it just looks really weird and I think this- actually I think this title card as a whole just looks kind of bad. Anyway, that's just kind of an amusing thing I noticed. Thank you for watching, I look forward to covering this show more when it comes out. And until next time, uh, stay generic. Also definitely do like the video and subscribe, please. Thank you, bye.